Jam! Hello again, and welcome to another fun-filled episode of Monday Night Magic here on the MTG Cast Network. This is Monday Night Magic number 561, and I am Chewy. Hi, Chewy. Hi, Chewy. Hello. So, joining me are two people that I recently saw in person. Which was awesome. I mean, it was it was all right. I mean, wait, you shouldn't meet people from the internet. They're strangers. Stranger danger. Stay away. And we no, have- no, that was last century. Nowadays, we call people from the internet to get rides. Oh. oh. Wait, we kind of did, broke all the 90s rules. Did you guys need a ride over the weekend? Because I may have just left you. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. We have strangers. <laughs> uh, yes. As you can tell, Clues and Squee are here. Hey, hey. Yay. Hello we again, are... and welcome to Tuesday Night Magic, because Monday was yesterday. Yes, we are recording yeah, this on sorry. Tuesday night because Clues My moved bad. house and had crap to do. Yeah, and let me tell you, moving an entire show about a doctor with a drug addiction was tough. I mean, you are a black man. This vexes me, you see? Mouse bites? No? More mouse bites. <laughs> huh? Medicine drug. <laughs> you are stupid. <laughs> Uh, pretty sure it's lupus. Don't I care. too am in this episode. <laughs> sorry, sorry. There's a classic animated gif of like every house episode from the first three seasons. Yep. Well, I'm gonna need a link to that. I'm just gonna jot down a note to myself to look for that later. Yeah, well, it's it's actually in a show notes uh, from a recent thing, so I'll find it for you in a, uh, in here in a minute. All right. But uh, yeah, so. Clues was in town on Friday, so we all met. Well, we would have all met for dinner, but traffic kept Bill away. It did. Ooh, so. boo. But we had Mexican food without Bill, and then we had Atomic Empire with Bill. While, in Durham, North Carolina. It's a great shop. You should check it out. What he said. While Clues and the Lady Clues played Legacy, Bill and I wandered around looking at comics and uh, nostalgia-ing. All right, this is not entirely accurate. It was Clues and Lady Clues lost terribly at Legacy. Oh, my God. But it was a great time. I'll say, but you had fun losing terribly at Legacy. Oh, yeah, right? I had a blast. We'll talk about it, let's say, at the end of the show. So you've got to stay tuned and listen to the whole thing, listeners. The whole thing. It's true. We will tell you who spilled whose beer where. We will. It was the judge, and it was Lady Clues' beer. Now you'll have to listen to find out everything else. So, so say where, say that for later. <laughs> yeah. So hey, it's time for new standard. Yay! Yes, because we just had a pro tour, right? Yeah, because Jerry T. Yeah. Won. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was like, hang on, brain not functioning. The fact that it's Tuesday has completely thrown me off. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, so let's just jump right in in Montreal, in the wilds of Canada. We had Kevin Jones take down the standard GP of... How many people were in Montreal? 850. Wow. I'm going to assume that he's a doctor. Dr. Jones? Dr. Jones. Does he not have time for love? That one I don't know. I'm sorry. No time for love, Dr. Jones. It was still short round. Yeah, yeah. No, but I don't know if he doesn't have time for... Oh, well, we'll we'll ask sometime. Three questions. (laughs) He writes for uh, a website, but I forget which one now. He writes for MTG Card Market, so we'll just we'll just write in and ask. Excuse me, Doctor Jones, do you have time for love? It'll be fine. But anyway, so he won piloting the Teamer Marvel deck, the one that's got um, Chandra Flame Caller and s- a fair amount of spells. Popular choice. Yes, because you know Marvel. Uh, in second place, we had Paul Dean, who is also playing Marvel, which, with a very similar build, he's missing a Torrential Gear Hulk. It probably has the eye. Possibly. That jerk. Give me that back. But I can't tell. I think just some of the other number. Oh, and he's got Dissenter's Deliverance instead. I don't even know what that card does. Oh, the Destroy Target Artifact with Cycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I it didn't know what plays that card the does. banjo. Uh, Yes. In third place, n- no, this is this is not Montreal. How did I get here? Here we go. In third Where place, are you? I, I was in Santiago. Somehow I clicked to a different tab and didn't realize it. 
Uh, in third place, uh, Maxime Aubin was running a blue-red control. So what's going on here? Torrential Gear Hulk, Sweltering Suns, and then everything else is land and instance. Card draw, counter spells. Ooh, commit to memory. That's cool. This deck is trying really hard to be legacy. Well, I mean, it's the best they could get in standard. Disallow, Essence Scatter, Glimmer, Harness Lightning, of course, Magma Spray, Negate, Pull from Tomorrow, and Void Shatter. Yeah, yeah, lots of removal, lots of counters, some card draw. You know, what you'd expect when a deck called Blue-Red Control, right? Yeah. And, of course, Wandering Fumarol, because Blue-Red. Fumarol. Fumarol. Also got the one Sphinx of the Final Word in uh, the board, because why not? So in what place was that? That was three. In fourth place, we have Max McVady running Mardu Vehicles. Vroom, vroom. There's actually more than one vehicle, so I guess we're okay calling it that. He's got yeah. uh, Avacyn, PNLR, uh, no dragons. Nope, no dragons. Chandra Flamecaller and Chandra Torch of Defiance in the board. Because you never know which one will be more useful, I guess. Depends on how many planes you have to land. <laughs> nice reference. <laughs> to hey, that picture episode. was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. who sent I, us that? What, what you got there, Clues? Well, <clears throat> I was I was looking at this uh, by force because it, it looks like an interesting card because, uh, you know, destroy X target artifacts. And I was thinking to myself, hey, you can't, like, pay three mana and choose the same artifact twice. That shouldn't work because you have to choose different targets because because it only has the word target on there once. Right. I don't think that works. So I thought, hey, I'll just go check the rulings real quick to see if they if they mentioned that. I would like you to read the rulings for this card. <clears throat> there are many m- Wait, wait, hang on. Scroll, scroll. There are many important moments in the story, but the most crucial called story spotlights are shown on cards. You can read more about these events in the official magic fiction at HTTP colon slash slash www.mtgstory.com. That's not a ruling. That's an ad. Yeah, that is not a ruling at all. No, what I... this means is that judges now control the magic story by choosing which cards are important. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's how it works I at all. I don't, I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, it, it's a dumb thing to throw in there. Yeah. Um, it, well, they used to use that space also to tell you, like, this card is a plane shifted version of this other card, but that wasn't really a ruling either. Yeah, they used to do that. Groundbreaker. This is the time shifted version of Ball Lightning. Holy crap! I've never seen yeah. that before. Huh? How weird that Groundbreaker just... was the first time shifted card that popped into my head. Yeah, that is an odd choice. Most people <laughs> think of Damnation or something. Who? Damnation. That card they're never going to reprint that they finally reprinted. That's the one. This is the time shifted rate, that... version of Wrath of God. Hey, look at that. Uh, the the point is with something like by force, you can't choose the same target multiple times for any one instance of the word target. So I don't think you can just pay more and target it more than once. That doesn't work. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was why a total did, tangent. Yeah, why did just, that thought even? That's not a tangent because it's completely unrelated. Well, no, it's in uh, the blue red control deck sideboard. So at least he saw it. Somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There sorry, I was I was looking at the sideboard of that blue red control deck because we haven't really seen much of much of control since. So why would you oh, think to to think about paying X and targeting? Where did that come from? Uh, well, I was just thinking, you know, what if what if we were using this in Legacy? Could I target the same thing more than once in Legacy if I had sufficient mana and? No, that would be silly and pointless anyway. And and you can't do it, so never mind. Look, I'm sorry. I was just looking at a card. My mind wandered. I drug you all into it. That's Clues. why I'm here. You're going to be that old person who asks weird questions, but it's going to be like next week. <laughs> next week? It's, it was like last month. Come on. See, you're already losing your concept of time. You are so old. <laughs> I mean, Wait, I haven't had a concept of time for like a decade. My joint. Yeah, but you know it's been like a decade, so you've got a better concept than Clues does. All right, I'm sorry. Were we on the next deck? Were we on the Mario Vehicles deck? We we were actually done with that one. I was about to move on when you... Great! Yeah. So, by the way, Clues, now when you tell people to get off your lawn... Uh Uh-huh. Oh, I actually have a lawn that they need to get off of. Right? Yeah, it's amazing. (laughs) I just mowed that lawn yesterday. Get off of it. Come on. (laughs) So in... (laughs) You need to put some lawn gnomes out there. Ooh. I could put long arms out there. So in fifth place, uh, Ethan, I'm going to say Gajewski. 
Yeah. Sure. Is running Mono Black Zombies. Which is a new deck that we haven't seen any of. I mean, before last Since week. last week? Yeah, you are <laughs> correct. Yes. Uh, so there's really... I don't really see much here to talk about, so... Uh, in sixth place, Sean McLaren. Wait, sixth? One, two, three... Yep. It is three, sixth, four, yeah. Five, six, seven, okay. So in sixth place, Sean McLaren is running Black Green Constrictor with, uh, let's see here, Liliana the Last Hope, Nissa Voice of Zendikar, and then such favorites as Grim Flayer, Kalitas, Rishkar, Pima Renegade, Tireless Tracker, because green, Verderous Gear Hulk, Walking Ballista, Winding Constrictor. Let's see, what's new here? We've got... Uh, nope, Traverse the Elven Wall, Fatal Push, Dissenter's Deliverance, and Never to Return. That's a fun one. Well, that's pretty much the whole deck I just rattled off, so there you go. Ta-da. It knows what it wants. It's got Scott, Sky Sovereign in the board. Sky Sovereign and uh, Kool-Aid Man of Nixilis and Yahini's Expertise. And Gonti, Lord of Luxury. Yeah, all good it's stuff. It's real of the lure. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> in... <laughs> <laughs> in seventh place, uh, Daniel Fournier, I'm going to call him that, whether that's right or not, is running Team or Marvel. Uh, very similar, if not the same, uh, not quite the same, but very similar to Kevin Jones's first place deck. Look, can somebody please just feed Ulamog? No. No. It won't He's do so any good. so hungry. So hungry. It wouldn't do any good. Look, every time he shows up, he eats two things. I'm not feeding him because if I feed him, he's going to keep coming back when he gets hungry. Just don't feed him after midnight, whatever you do. I don't feed him at all. Yeah, on a long enough timeline, it's always after midnight. So Yeah, that's the thing I never quite understood about. That's this. the thing? That is a thing I never quite understood. <laughs> how do Mogwai survive in the wild when it rains, Clues? Uh, well, they just multiply. That's yeah, how they, they have breed. lots of friends. Like tons yeah. of them. All right, and then... Why do we keep them in little cages in strange shops <laughs> so they don't get wet? To anyway. round out the top eight, uh, Liam Kane... Uh, how do you pronounce that? I do not. Mailer. Uh, Mailer. Uh, Liam Kane, French Miller. LKM. Is, LKM is... <laughs> yes, LKM. Mardu Vehicles with... Okay, this is... Uh, yeah, with Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and Gideon, ally of Zendikar. That that Gideon. And then more of the usual Archangel Avison, blah, blah, blah. Still no dragons. I guess we've decided uh, Avison is just more better for the top eight. She's really good. Yeah. Is there is there a metagame breakdown by chance? Um, there is not. Okay. I don't think so. Well, let's take a just a quick run through... The rest of the top 32. Black Green Energy in ninth. Teamer Marvel. Mardu Vehicles. Teamer Marvel. Teamer Marvel. Teamer Marvel. Black Green Constrictor. Bant Marvel. What? Oh, if you go to top stories of GP Montreal, the day two decks is listed there. Oh, well, of course it would be there, wouldn't it? Yeah. And oh. there's a density of Teamer Marvel at the top of that list. Control, blue red control. Oh, blue red zombies. Remember that deck? Andrew Wolber took it to 22nd. Wow. That's actually impressive. Marvel, 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 Marvel. Marvel. Oh, white blue tempo in 29th. Gideon, Avison, Spell Quiller, Glory Bound Initiate, Thraven Inspector Walking Ballista, Selfless Spirit, Eldrazi Sky Spawner. Oh, wow, this is. White blue tempo. It's it's like the flash deck, but without you know as much of the flash. Uh, no. <laughs> are, are we not doing that joke anymore? No, no, no. Oh. Metallic rebuke oh. sensor, ether sphere harvester, just one, and stasis snare and declaration in stone. Huh. Yeah, very very tempo-y. And then the rest is Marvel. Okay. Where did you say that was in the in the top stories? Yeah. So under the top stories, the first thing that Whoa. um Megan does is she lists the. 134 decks that came in with 19 or more points on day two. In other words, the ones that were potentially capable of getting to the top eight. So, Chewy, how many of the 134 decks are Team or Marvel? Uh, can I say damn near half? Yeah, you can. Yes, I believe yeah. that. Very be scientific. Accurate. Because the 60 of the 134 decks are uh, 
team or Marvel? Seems like pretty good odds. Man, everybody wants to just live. No, no, that, that doesn't count the other Marvel. <laughs> that's that's true. lower on the list. So many people want to just live by the top six cards of their library. Seems to work. I guess so. Hmm. Other Marvel. Nice. Other Marvel. Isn't that just DC? Oh, they uh, wish. No. <laughs> no, yeah, they really They really wish, wish at this point. <laughs> DC's got a lot going for it, but when it comes to movies, they really wish they were other Marvel. They I really think other do. Marvel is Netflix and other other Marvel is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hey, it's not alone anymore. To the third ABC show about superheroes, but we can talk about that later. Wait, there is? I got to write that down. So let's see, uh, 15 Mardu Vehicles, 13 Mono Black Zombies, 11 Black Green X Aggro, 10 Blue Red Control, and then everything else is everything else. Yep. And the rest. Hufflepuff. Oh. What's this and the rest crap? Hufflepuff. There were a variety of of uh, control decks. Shaheen Sarani is playing blue black control. Jonathan LeBeau is playing black red control. Good lord. And then there's a hey, what, the winning picture what? is a bunch of people dabbing. Okay. I was going to say why why are they dabbing? Can they not dab? Cuz they're on the internet. Because they think it's cute. Okay. All right, everyone, know. I need you to stop dabbing. It, For forever. It just it's just silly. Yes. Not not silly in the funny way, just silly in the I really feel awkward now and want to walk away. Like, Wait. think of all the Monty Python sketches that you know and love. Yes. Both of them? Well, not you specifically, Bill. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, all the Monty Python sketches that you know and love and think are brilliant and pop into your head when someone says Monty Python. Now, the other 75% of the stuff Monty Python did that no one liked or saw or remembered, that's what dabbing is. <laughs> Okay, where does how to spot a tr- how to identify a tree from a long way off? Where does that fall? I don't know that one, so clearly that's in that that oh, batch. Damn there. it! Okay, so let's go to Santiago then. We're we're done in in Montreal. Oh no, we're not done in Montreal. One other thing happened. We have a new level three judge. Oh yes, we do. And that is Chris Lansdell, frequent host. Let's go with friend of the show, Chris yeah, we'll go Lansdell. With Congratulations. Congratulations, Lansdale. And now pulled from YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, if you're listening to this, do you know you can listen on YouTube now if you like? I like the way everyone was like, put on YouTube, put on YouTube, put on YouTube. So I did. And then the first week, it had a pretty good amount of hits. And I was like, okay, I'll keep doing it. And it's been steadily going down every week. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> number of people that well, actually listen on YouTube. I'm like, uh, people don't listen to this show. You know that, right? It's true. So let's see. Santiago. How many people were in Santiago? 718. Dang. You know, I've been to Santiago on multiple occasions, but I've never actually seen the city because I, I just go through the airport. That sounds terrible. I once had my wallet stolen in the Santiago airport. I'm glad it was only once. Did that you was real lesson? weird because then like I had to cancel a bunch of credit cards using Skype. And this was back in the day when the whole Skype calling out to a telephone was weird. Is it not weird? Um, I don't think it's weird anymore. I think oh, it's pretty okay. commonplace. At work, we just use Skype for everything. Oh, see, Skype sucks. So we use Discord now here on. Like, I mean, these shows. really for everything? I mean, we use it to call people and everything like. Like, my phone do you is use it as a, as a compiler? Yeah. Yeah. It's not very good at it. Because I didn't know that it, it could to do cook that. dinner? <laughs> uh, poorly, yeah. Nice. Okay, then. So. You just let it run for a while and the computer gets warm. Ah. Uh, okay. So, who won, damn it? Uh, are these in order? These appear to be in order. Okay. So, Maro Sasso won. Playing Team or Marvel? Marvel? Yeah, I hadn't even had gotten the page up and I was guessing Team or Marvel. Yeah. Can you guess what's in second, though? Uh, Mardu Vehicles. Nope. Marvel. Oh. And this is... Okay, so my brain says to pronounce that Gregor Kowalski, but there's a Z there and a Z there. Yeah. I just constantly make a Z noise while saying Gregor. So Mr. Kowalski uh, is also playing Marvel. Both of these... No, no, I'm sorry. Maru Sasso's first place deck is running Chandra Torch of Defiance. And a sweltering suns. Uh, Kowalski is running Chandra Flamecaller, so that's neat. Uh, and third place, Daniel Vega is running Marvel. 
the flame color version. <sighs> In fourth place, Guillermo Merham, let's say, is running Mono Black Zombies. Is any of this sounding familiar to you guys? No, not at all. Mm, okay. Like it was uh, only yesterday. In, what was that, fourth? So in fifth place, Javier Luna is running Mardu Vehicles. Yup. Avison, Gideon Allies in the car. A couple of cars. All right, then. Uh, Nicholas Epstein, Epstein, that guy, is running Mardu Vehicles. Yup. Uh, Ignacio Sayez is running Red Green Energy. Here's something different. Different. Now for something completely different. Yes. Steam powered. Torch of def uh, chor Chorch? Chandra Torch of Defiance. Chandra Torch of Defiance and Glory Bringer and Ronus the Indomitable, along with a bunch of the uh, standard uh, energy cards Rampager, Long Tusk, Voltaic Brawler, Bristling Hydra. You know, those guys. Seems pretty cool. Got that Nissa Vital Force in the board because Vital. And then in 8th place, Niels Norlander is running Blue-Red Control. With four copies of Hieroglyphic Illumination in it. Neat. Hmm. So, I noticed this earlier, before the show. Mm -hmm. Both of these Grand Prix Top 8s consisted of three Marvel decks, two Vehicles decks, one Mono Black Zombies, one Blue-Red Control, and one Something with Green. This one's Red Green Energy. Montreal was the Black Green Constrictor deck. Well, that's not terrible. So I think the format is solved. <laughs> <laughs> the top eight is solved. The top eight is solved, yes. The rest of the format can be all over the place, but the top eight has been solved. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of room for uh, wiggling, but only a little. Have you considered the conspiracy theory that uh, Watsi has rigged the top eight so that they would be identical? That sounds like a lot of work. It does. And... No, I was going to say something mean. Never mind. It's fine. Never mind. Go on. Good job. So let's see here. Uh, again, gonna, the, what? Oh, when you're done with that part, you're going to like the top stories of this one, too. Well, that's what I was saying. Uh, again, oh, yeah. in the top stories, we have did some deck counting. So glad that they put that there where everyone would totally think to find it. Although, if they're going to start doing that, that like the first thing in the top stories is some sort of a metagame breakdown, just let us know and we'll all just look there. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, this isn't a day two breakdown. This is a top 32 breakdown, but the top 32, the roughly the same number were... I believe uh, damn near half. Damn near half yeah. were yeah. Teamer Etherworks Marvel. This time it's 15 of the top 32. Uh, six blue red control, five Mardu vehicles, three mono black zombies, and one each of red green energy, white blue flash, and black red heckbent. Because hellbent is no cards in hand, and the cards in this new set won't what less one or less. Didn't I say heckbent when that first came out? I, I, yeah, I think we did. Cool. You may have read it somewhere else, but you heard it here first. Yeah. So format's all. Go on, everybody. Do 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 do. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I don't know what that was. Okay, then. Monomena. Oh, yeah. So that's your uh, your Grand Prix. So if you're going to uh, go to a standard Grand Prix, find seven of your buddies. Right. Three of you play Marvel. Two of you play Vehicles. One of you play Zombies. Mono Black. One of you play Blue Red Control. And one of you play whatever the hell you want. As long as Something it's got green, green in it. Yeah. That's right. Ant. That does not have green in it. Tess. And is also not standard. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to jump from one to the other. Did not matter. Play elves. Sure. Play yeah, children. get get those standard legal elves together. It'll be great. So now we get to move over to the Star City Open or Tour or whatever the hell it's called in Louisville. Louisville. Where... 900 players in 300 teams played Team Constructed. Team Constructed at the in the Star City Tour, remember, is one person playing Standard, one person playing Modern, and one person playing Legacy. The king of all formats. Sure. Which we'll creates an interesting deck evaluation game because essentially the people that make it to the top eight are doing it across different formats, different metagames, and 
honestly, if say the modern deck lost like 60% of the games, but the standard and legacy decks did amazing, they would still make their way all the way through. So the individual decks are probably not as exciting as the overall view. Two out of three decks need to win each round. That is very strange. So wait, having not watched any of this, so if if two people just win, do, does the third game just stop? Or do they play it out for points or tiebreakers or something? They may play it out for tiebreakers. I don't know. I, I would think that they play it out for tiebreakers. You'd think. Hmm. But I don't know. So, what I want to know is in in this first, or, or I assume we're going to go through these decks, right? Well, wait, like how would it factor into tiebreakers? Oh, I don't know how any team stuff works, like, to be honest with you. it's all I, just, I mean, I'm extrapolating based on normal magic, but whether you went 2-0 or 2-1 doesn't matter for tiebreakers unless you get to a ridiculously improbable tie, right? Hey, the goblin has a point. Said nobody ever. But <laughs> no, no, that's what the piker does. Sorry, that was, that was racist. I'm sorry. Goblins, I'm sure, make good points uh, relatively frequently. <clears throat> we point into things, yeah. But I don't know how they do these. I'm just saying that I wouldn't know that that would necessarily factor in. I have no idea. So if you know, then you've already tweeted at us. So hey, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, so how how do we how do we do this? So the the winning team was Chris Anderson playing standard, Spencer Garnier Garnier. Let's go with that. Playing Legacy and Clay Spicklemeyer playing Modern. So I'm going to stop you right there. Hold okay. on. First of all, yeah, I think Squeeze right. I don't think that the third game actually gets played if two people win because it wouldn't matter for tiebreakers at all. Since uh, your first tiebreaker is opponent's match win percentage, your second tiebreaker is your game win percentage. Well, game win percentage. Look, I don't know, but the question I wanted to ask is Clay Spicklemeyer, are you related to a John Spicklemeyer from Florida? Because if you are, let me know. He was my roommate my freshman year in college. Awesome guy. I just wondered what he's up to. You've actually hit that point of old person who thinks that everyone who shares a trade knows each other, aren't you? <laughs> well, look, Spicklemeyer is not a common name, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not like it was Jones, and I'm like, oh yeah, my freshman roommate was was John Jones. Are you related to him? The Martian He's from Mars. Hunter? Exactly. <laughs> no, he was he was John Spicklemeyer. He was a football player. He's a long snapper for Notre Dame. Dude, this is a family show. So, yeah, it's Turtle Day. It's someone fine. ask Clay Spicklemeyer. Fine. Um, so I don't think we're going to do this for all of these at all. But since they won, uh, Chris Anderson was running Blue Red Control in Standard. Grixis Delver in Legacy was Spencer Garnier's deck, and Four Color Death Shadow in Modern, of course, was Clay Spicklemeyer's deck. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's run through the names here. Second place was the team of James Baker, Legacy, Mitchell Sachs, Standard, and Germain, Modern. These are not in any kind of order. Uh, certainly not. No. Uh, third place, Jeff Stevens, Legacy, Nicholas Bird, Modern, Zach Allen, Standard. Fourth place, Casey Walton, Legacy, Brendan Reginbald, Standard, Connor Bowman, Modern. Fifth place, Lucas Michaels, Modern, Hunter Nance, Legacy. Collins Mullen, Standard. Sixth place, Tannen Grace Legacy. Todd Stevens, Modern. And Brennan DeCandio, Standard. Seventh place, Adam Bowman, Standard. Peter Lucian, Modern. Arthur Fusco, Legacy. And rounding out the top eight, Brandon Johnson on Legacy. Brian Heidel. Heidel? Heidel? In Modern. And Jason Rice in Standard. There you go. Now. Ta-da! There is a day two metagame breakdown here. So let's go look at that. That's probably a more fair view. In standard, let's see. Of the 30 teams. Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Of the 30 teams. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore 30 people playing standard. Damn near half were running <laughs> Teamer Etherworks. Is there any way that's not the title of this episode? No, I don't think there I, is. I already put it in the show notes, and I'm not adding any more. That's what it is. So, yeah. Team of Either Works, 13 out of 30. Again, right at damn near half. Uh, yeah. The, the others, next highest is only three. Yeah, the next highest, what he said. There's three on black-white zombies, two on blue-red control, or three on blue-red control, two on green-black energy, one on... Teamer Dynavolt Tower, and then one each for the rest. Unreal. 
Let's go look at modern. Modern, there are four dredge decks in the, uh, well, that made day two. Three of this deck called Counter's Company, which is a collected company. Come and knock on our door. <laughs> we'll be waiting for you. Uh, pulled from YouTube. Uh, <laughs> uh, three Counter's Company decks, which are collected, uh, uh, collected company, Court of Culling, with things that run counters, and... Crap, I forgot the name of the damn card. Vizier, some of the Vizier of Remedies. Jafar. Which, what, n no, not Jafar. <laughs> Jafar would add counters, not remove them. That's true, that's true. So the Vizier of Remedies is from uh, Amon Ket, and for those that don't remember or don't play modern, for one and a white, it's a 2-1 human cleric that's uncommon. And if one or more minus one minus one counters would be put on a creature you control, you put that many minus one minus one counters minus one, on it instead. Yeah. Then that's what it says. <laughs> yeah. Minus one, minus one, minus one counter. Yeah. Uh, and so for things like Devoted Druid, put a minus one, minus one counter on it to untap it. Hmm. <laughs> and it taps, taps for green mana, by the way. So yeah, <laughs> that makes all the mana you could ever want. Hey, look, Walking Ballista's in the deck. Uh, also, that. let's say you just want to gain a whole lot of life. Kitchen Finks. Persist when it comes back with a minus one minus one counter, it comes back with one less, so it comes back with no minus one minus one counters, which means huh. it will pers persist forever. All you need is a sack outlet. Oh, look, Viscera Seer. Neat. Gain Seems infinite life, good. look at your entire deck, put the card that you want at the top, and move the rest of your deck down accordingly. Yeah. Seem, seems good. And on top of that, it's just a, you know, good old normal collected company slash court of calling deck. That has these two little infinite combos just thrown in for good measure. Hey, Clues. Yeah. Hey, clues. If when you're gaining, you know, an arbitrarily large amount of life, you have to pick a number, right? You do have to pick a number, yes. So when you pick that number, if you're doing it with Viscera Seer, you, you can essentially, as long as that number is greater than, like, 60, you really can just essentially cut your deck to where you want it to be and then say you didn't move the scry after that, right? That is a shortcut you can propose... Right. And it is likely that your opponent will say, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But technically, I don't believe your opponent has to accept that shortcut. In which case, they would watch you do that until you got to the card you want. And then they you would say, just watch you do it. Anymore. Yeah. Okay. Those I mean, one of, one of the reasons that I say that is uh, maybe they didn't want you to gain the full like 60. Maybe they wanted you to, or I'm sorry, uh, Kitchen Finks, when it comes back, you get uh, what, one life, two life? Two life. Uh, two. Two life. Okay, so maybe they didn't want you to gain all of that life. They just wanted you to gain until you actually got to that card and stopped. You wouldn't stop, though. Yeah, you yeah, because you, you could keep going, but... You would just say, I look at the top, I leave it. I look at the top, I leave it. It's just scrying. Yeah. Yeah, the problem, Bill, with the way you want to do it is once you find the card you want, you never saw the stuff below it. Right. Right. So it's not Which like you can I'm... pick up your deck and flip through it until you find the one you want and then just put the rest on the bottom because you never see the stuff below it. So you'd have to go from the top. Yeah, I know you go from the top, but that's what I'm saying. You go from the top 60 times, uh, the, so top the whole deck, and then you keep going till you get to it, and then you stop because you've infinite. You just say how many you do that, and then the rest of it is shortcutted to, and then I don't do it anymore, but I'm still gaining life, which is, yeah, it's shorthand, and I was just asking if something you can do or if you know you have to go through the motion on it because it's not you know a perfect loop. Yeah, I mean, you have to pick a number. Right. And as long as you pick the number high enough, I think it's a shortcut that, that your opponent will likely accept. I because what you need to be able how to you do... Shortcut. You can't look at the cards you would never see. But you will see all of the cards if you do it 60 times. You don't reorder them. You just keep moving them to the bottom. Yeah, so and what then Shui you is do it again is... until you get to the card you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So... so you do it enough times to see the whole deck, in which case you're back at the top, and then you... Just repeat. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, so I just say I'm going to do this a thousand times, but once I go through it all the way once and then back to the card I want, I'm then just going to keep doing it just to gain the life. Right, okay. Now it all makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the, the key with the shortcuts with loops is it has to be uh, a finite number and you have to know exactly what the outcome will be when you're done. Right. And in this case, you do. So I would allow it, but yeah, that's that's what I would say. Okay. Your mileage may vary. Call a judge. 
Exactly. You should definitely call a judge when you do nonsense like that. If possible, call level three judge Chris Lansdale. He'll be happy to come do whatever it is that's going on there. So, okay. So, like I said, in modern, four dredge, three of these counters company decks, two uh, Decepticons, two Jund Death Shadow, two Abzan Death Shadow, two Eldrazi Tron, two Blue White Control, two White Red Prison, and one each of the rest. <laughs> and then in Legacy, there were six Grixis Delver the decks. The king of all formats. What he said. Uh, six Grixis Delver decks, four Storm of some variety, uh, two Lands, two Esper Deathblade, two Sultai Delver, two Four Color Delver, two Burn, and then one each of all the rest. You'll note that there are no uh, Cheerios or Goblins in the rest of those, and that's very, very sad. sad. I mean, yeah. there's two Burn and one Elves. That's okay. That's true, yeah. And I don't know about the Storms, whether they are Ant or Tess. And it really doesn't matter for the purposes of this discussion. Certainly does not. Yeah. So, yeah. It looks like Legacy and Modern in this bizarre team format have pretty healthy. Look at that. There's an eight rack in Modern. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they have a pretty good uh, metagame there. Standard has Etherworks and then some other stuff, just like it did at the GPs. So at least it's consistent. Damn near half. Hmm. So that said, let's go into the... Uh, what are these? Classics. The classics. Yeah, so... What's the first one here? Modern is the first one that I had in a tab. So, Brad Carpenter won... Brad Carpenter. I don't know why Carpentier. that's hard to say. One with Counter's Company, the deck we were just talking about. Uh, Garrett Vibbert is in second with a black-white Eldrazi Texas. What? Oh, this deck. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both Thalias, a bunch of Eldrazi things... Some uh, blink effects. Yeah, 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 okay. Makes sense. Then there's Mark Parker and Andy Roop, both playing the Counters Company decks. Fifth place, Ethan Rakoff is playing Decepticons. Jamin Mead in six is playing Abzan. What's Abzan? Oh, it's modern. It's, it's Abzan, duh. Come <laughs> uh, <John. laughs> Seventh place, John Pellman is playing a White Red Prison deck. Is this the Emrakul Nahiri? Oh, yeah, this deck. It's running one Emrakul the Eons Torn, and then two Ajani Vengeant, one Chandra Torch of Defiance, one Elspeth Sun's Champion, two Gideon Jura, and three Nahiri the Harbinger. Because damn. Like Super Jail. And then of course you've got your things like Batterskull, because reasons. Uh, Chalice of the Void, Blood Moon, <laughs> Leyline of Sanctity, <laughs> Blessed Alliance, Lightning Helix, Sudden Shock, Anger of the Gods, Wrath of God. Just owning all over everything. Wrath of the Angry Gods. Uh, suddenly shocking the Helix in the Blessed Alliance by the Blood Moon. Ooh, not there. Ow. <laughs> hey, Clues. Yeah? Got boil in the side. Yeah, oh, it does. That's a beautiful thing. Not even boiling seas. Straight up boil. The Take brutal that. one. <laughs> oh, it's also got word of seizing in the board. There's a thing you don't see uh, terribly. Uh, oh, yeah. What does it do to islands? Uh, nothing, uh, but it's a... Oh, it, you could take it. It's not called Threaten anymore. What is this called? This effect? Oh. What's what's the new one for Give Me That Until End of Turn? Ray of Command, Threaten, now it's got a new name. I mean, I, I can, still think of it as Act of Treason. Act of Treason. Half? That's the one. Act of Treason with Split Second. For those that don't know, it's a Give Me That with Split Second, so they can't even stop you. See, so yeah, you could technically use this to take an island if you really wanted to. Don't. It does say Target Permanent, so yeah. You ask what it does to island. That's what it does to islands. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, da -da -da -da, that was seventh. And in eighth place, Jacob Hudson is running green, white, hate bears. Hate bears. Because bears are outside, and I don't like it outside. Hate bears. Arch nemesis uh, to care bears. The, re <laughs> the rest of the top eight, ad nauseum. Decepticons. That's Affinity, by the way. Escape Shift, Abzan, Jeskai Control, Green White, Hexproof, Amulet, Titan. Remember that deck? And more Decepticons. Yay, let's go to Standard, where I bet it's damn near half. One, two... No, no, it's not. How about that? Uh, it's probably because the bulk of them made it to day two. Uh, of the, the main event? Yeah. <laughs> so That's sort of the downside of the classics. Uh, Zan Syed, let's say, one, playing Tamer Marvel, 
Uh, Raja Suleiman won, run, uh, uh, took second with the Teamer Dynavolt Tower. Ooh, let me look at that real quick. So this is pretty much just a blue-red control deck with Dynavolt Tower and some extra stuff that makes... It, it's, it doesn't even have extra stuff that makes energy. It's just... It's a blue-red control deck running Dynavolt Tower. Hmm, okay. I mean, like, you got Glimmer of Genius and all. Yeah, the Glimmer of Genius and Harness Lightning are already in this deck, though, so... Yeah. Oh, wait, there is a tune with Ether. So it's a blue-red control deck with a splash of green for uh, Dissenter's Deliverance and a tune with Ether. Huh. <laughs> Long Tusk Cub. Oh, yeah, there's some other uh, energy things in the board and uh, Sylvan Advocate because, you know, green. Very interesting I, thing. I, I like the... Um, uh, where'd you go? I don't know. Ah, cards. Um... I like seeing Dragon Master Outcast perpetually chilling in the sideboard to this format. Yeah, yeah, because it's really good some of the it, time, and other times it's completely worthless. Well, it had that fun little interaction for a while where you could just get it back off a command, but now they're just like, oh yeah, it's just a red. You don't really need to cheat this. Yeah. So let's see, that was, what was that? That was second place. Third place, another Teamer Marvel deck uh, piloted by Chi Yim, let's say. In fourth place, a Teamer Tower deck, which... <laughs> Teamer is looking pretty good here. <laughs> which is very similar to the second place deck, which they labeled Teamer Dynavolt. So, you know, whatever. It's still a black-green control deck with... Or black... God, a mighty black-green. Where What? A blue-red control deck with a little splash of green and Dynavolt Tower. I'll be all right. Uh, that was uh, Yasina Rao. Fifth place, Ted Felicetti is running four color mid range. What is this? What? Well, you know how you like Chandra and Chandra and Nahiri. Who do they get along with? Who do all these red plains orcas get along with? Obviously, Bant. So, Tamiya. What in the blue balls is going on here? So, okay, this deck is running one flame color and three torch of defiance, one Nahiri, and two Tamiya. Because, you know, when three colors just doesn't cut it, you go four. But then I the mean, rest of the running deck, Oath of Nissa anyway. <laughs> they are running Oath of Nissa, so that's true. Uh, the rest of the deck is Glorybringer. Oh, there it is. Rogue Refiner, Sylvan Advocate, Tireless Tracker, Whirler Virtuoso. This is the uh, this is the four color Sahili deck without the Sahili combo. Is yeah. exactly what this is. Harness Lightning, Oath of Chandra, and Oath of Nissa because seven Planeswalkers of four colors. Uh, Attune of Ether and Traverse the Ulvenwald. Wow. This deck makes my head hurt. But hey, it took fifth, so kick ass. In sixth place, Taylor Stevens is running four-color vehicles. What? What? What's the other color? It's got some vehicles in it. Oh, it's got Metallic Rebuke. So, blue. Yep. There's also Negate in the board. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Other than that, it's essentially a uh, Mardu Vehicles deck. It's just thrown in some Metallic Rebuke. Fumarole. Yeah, I got the Fumarole in the board. In ca I guess that's in case you put in the Negates. You want more blue? Probably. You never want more blue. Well, this guy might. You don't. He's, he's weird. Uh, seventh You're place. Negates, you might want the Fumarole also because it's another dude that can attack. That's true. Uh, Mario Torres is running a Bant Etherworks Marvel deck. With... Uh, Linvala the Preserver. Hey. <laughs> Neat. Poor Tommy you didn't make it to this one. Of course not. You don't want her in the top six cards of your library, apparently. Oh, poor Angel of Sanctions. First time I've seen it. <laughs> oh, hey, look at that. Down there in the board. Oh, yeah, that's the, the O-Ring Angel. Okay. Yeah, the one that I expected to do a little more than it has been. Uh, maybe after rotation. And then to finish off the top eight, Daniel Phelps is running Esper Spirits, which is a blue-red flash deck, pretty much, with Anguished Unmaking and Fatal Push. No, blue-white. Do what? A uh, blue-white. What'd I say? He said blue-red. Sorry, blue... God. Those are some weird spirits. Sorry, sorry, my, my brain is... It's late, all right? Yes, blue-white flash deck running... Black for Anguished Unmaking and Fatal Push. My bad. And a few cards in the board, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. That's your top eight. 
there's a four color energy. Lots of four colors going on here. Good Lord. In fact, the entire top nine is uh, three or more colors. There's a blue red control in 10th. No zombies to be seen. This is weird. More team. You think that maybe Aether Hub is really good? Could be. Yeah. So there's another Marvel, another blue red control, another four color vehicles, another blue red control, a four color control, and another team or Etherworks. What's four color control? It's the same deck with different things. Look at the fifth place deck, Allison Coleman, four color control. The creature base is similar to the uh to, 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 to the four color energy deck. No, a four color mid range deck, but it's running. Tireless Tracker. It's also running Nissa Steward of Elements. This deck makes my head hurt. All these decks make my head hurt. There's too many colors. I can't do it. I'm gonna fall out. <laughs> Making you work for it. Yeah, let's let's go to Legacy. Yes, that is where we belong. After all, it is in fact the king of all formats. And okay, some of the best Legacy decks might have been in day two. <clears throat> so there you go. But here, we'll take a look anyway. Why not? In first place, we have Kenan Haas, who is playing Jund Depths. And I don't believe, by the way, I think there's just one deck that has any cards from the new set in here. And this is not it. Uh, incidentally, uh, if you're playing against Turbo Depths, I don't recommend playing uh, Cheerios against them. It's, uh, it's a terrible matchup. Because <laughs> I... I had that happen. That was that was pretty horrible. Uh, but there you go. So Jun Depths, it's the Dark Depths combo that you're really looking out for there. In second place, Zachary Koch, Kosh, Koch, Kosh, Koch, Koch. Let's go with that. He's playing Infect. Uh, and here, I believe uh, in the second place Pepsi, deck, we, actually. we have a single copy of Dissenter's Deliverance in, uh, in the sideboard. I think... I think that's it for new cards from the new set. That, that's the and cycling green destroy target artifact. Instant. That is the cycling green destroy target artifact card. Yes. In third place, we have Piper Powell playing food chain, which uh, it has walking ballista in it, which I guess is kind of cool. But when you can make infinite mana, cause you've got Mist hollow Griffin uh, and you've got food chain. Yeah. That, that's probably going to work out well for you when you have a really, really big walking ballista that you can just shoot your opponent to death. So, pew pew. <clears throat> Seems good. Seems good. That was third place. In fourth place, Aaron Kazprizak, let's say, is playing a uh, blue black land still. I approve of one of these colors. Blue black land still. <laughs> blue black landsdell. That's right. No, no, he was in Montreal. Oh, you're right. Huh, wonder why he named the deck that. In fifth place, Nate Barton is playing some Grixis Delver that has some zombie fish. You guys like zombie fish, right? Zombie fish. And Young Peasy. Because everybody loves Young Peasy. For uh, a certain value of everyone. Sixth place, we have Emma Handy playing Belcher. Now there's a glass cannon that I can approve of. I wonder I do like what the, possessed Emma to play Belcher. Uh, I appreciate that land base, though. The lols. Uh yeah, it usually runs a singleton taiga. That's the kind of land base I can afford in legacy. Because <laughs> Goblin Charbelcher really likes it when you find that singleton taiga. Uh in seventh place, Chase Harrell is running Sultai Delver. So some more Delver nonsense for your delving. In eighth place, we have Donovan Abraham playing Grixis Delver. So we had three different Delver decks in the top eight. We had two Grixis and one Sultai. But other than that, it looks like everything else. We got Jun Depths, Infect Food Chain, Landstill, Belcher. Yeah, so there you go. Two different varieties. So we had like seven different decks in the top eight. Seems so, good. Seems decent. So uh, just close. outside of, yes, I'm sorry. Um, how do you feel about this post miracles deck list world? Uh, I love it because you know what there's not in this the, these deck lists? Top. That's right. And it's a beautiful thing. Oh, man. I, I don't really know what to make of the post-Delver legacy world yet, but I know that I like it. So that's cool. 
Um, outside of the top eight, let's see what's going on. We've got some uh, Maverick in ninth, Elves in 11th. There's some sneak and show there in between in 10th. Uh, Shardless out in 12th, Punishing Abzan, Sneak and Show, Colorless Eldrazi, Reanimator. It looks like a very diverse top 16, quite frankly. Yeah. So, hey, you remember how uh, I had, I felt personally, and apparently Watsi agreed with me, that uh, Miracles was such a dominant deck that it was just, you know, warping the format. Hey, look at this. We got rid of Miracles and, uh, you know, it's it's wide open. Unless you were playing uh, Cheerios at Atomic Empire in Durham, North Carolina. It's a great shop. You should check it out over the weekend. And then you would have gone just 0-4 is what would have happened. Uh, he's not wrong. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But I had a great time. More on that maybe later if we have time at the end of the show. But that's your legacy for today. <laughs> okay, then. So... Enough tournament nonsense. Let's talk about bad news. Yeah. So, um... Definitely uh, sad. Do what? Definitely sad news. Yeah. So on the 16th, last Tuesday, of course, right after we record, uh, Elan Bergeau, the director of global organized play for Wizards of the Coast, is no longer the director of global organized play for Wizards of the Coast. She tweeted that uh, after a great 21 years, she was out. I'm curious to think about 21 years in the lifespan of Magic. Well, considering Magic's only, what, 25? Yeah. 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 More than damn near half. <laughs> That's damn near all. Yeah. And in fact, her Twitter profile now reads, former director of global organized play for Wizards of the Coast. Yep. It is a sad, sad day. I met Alain on a number of occasions at various events, uh, various GPs around the country, and uh, she was always friendly and full of energy and so excited about what was going on. So yeah, I am sad to see her go. Yeah, very much so. She, I wish uh, her the best of luck. She once uh, accosted me and, and, and almost punched me because I hadn't come to say hi yet. If she punched you, you'd know. <laughs> Uh, I don't think she was wearing the uh, the massive bling at that particular point. <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Yeah. But yeah, she she's a sweetheart, and she did an amazing job of putting up with Magic Player's crap, which, as anyone who listens to this show should know, Magic Players are completely full of crap, and are generally just terrible people once they get to the internet. So, I'm amazed she lasted as long as she did. I'm amazed anyone could last that long. She's clearly very tough. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, I wouldn't want to fight her. I was going to say no. feisty is the word I might use to describe her if I could only choose one. Sure. Interesting choice. I still wouldn't want to fight her. I'm pretty sure she could take me. Yeah, that would be a bad idea. Don't don't fight Ellen. I'm also a wuss, so just saying. Anyway, so yes, that is very sad. If you would like to uh, read the reaction from the greater magic community on Twitter, uh, a link to her tweet is in the show notes and it just keeps scrolling all the replies of people saying no and how much they'll miss her and how much amazing she did it just keeps scrolling it just keeps loading it yeah as of this point there are 377 replies wow i'm sure that number will go up given time as a very interesting compare and contrast the uh overall um feeling on twitter was was quite quite positive we were all very sad to see her go uh, the overall mood on Reddit was overall negative. That should come as a surprise to no one who's ever been to Reddit. Nate, what do you mean? Uh, well, there were a lot of people who uh, were saying very negative things about organized play in general and uh, some some missteps that have occurred over the past year or so in organized play. And they laid all 100% of the blame firmly on Ellen, and that is totally not fair. Don't be those people. That's my takeaway from that. Don't be those people. He's not wrong. Don't be those people. Yeah, don't. So, uh, the very next day, in Mark Rosewater's Tumblr, which is a source of official news now, which drives me up the damn wall, uh, he introduced something called Play Design. Uh, a new group within R&D who are full-time employees... 
full-time employees of play design. Like, that's their job. And they are solely dedicated, quote, to the health of tournament environments to make sure the playing magic in structured settings is as enjoyable as possible. So, yeah, Dan Burdick was hired to run this team, and some current R&D members uh, and some playtesters, like Melissa DeTora and Andrew Brown, have been put on this team. And yeah, their play design is going to be involved at every step of creating new sets. So design, for example, will be working with play design to make sure we are creating mechanics that can be properly balanced. In other words, this is my two cents, they've had enough screw-ups in the past couple years to where they've got to fix whatever's causing them. Because R&D's not catching the problems. See uh, the earlier statement about uh, Felidar Guardian and, oh, we didn't even think of that. Yeah. They had a really strong run for a long time there of not having to ban cards in standard. And in the last year, they have banned cards in pretty much every constructed format, haven't they? Yeah, I think so. I mean, modern might have got skipped, but so yeah, like standard and legacy, seed and bans. And legacy is like whatever, it's legacy, but um, cards in that probably should be banned more often than they are. But when it comes to standard, like the one of the selling points of standard is that you don't ban cards. Okay, let's see. In 2016, Modern had Splinter Twin, Summer Bloom, Eye of Ugin all banned, and Sword of the Meek was unbanned. In 2017, Modern had Gitaxian Probe and Golgari Grave Troll. Standard had Emrakul, Smuggler's Copter, Reflector Mage, Felidar Guardian. Wow, they've banned more cards in... Standard in the last year than they have in Legacy. In the last two years. And the cards that they banned in Legacy were the ones that were printed in Standard, right? Wait, say that again? So, like, the last cards that they banned in Legacy, if I recall, were the not counting the top. And the ones from this most recent one um, were the ones that were previously printed with no regard for what they would do to formats older than standard. In other words, treasure cruise and dig through time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so maybe this will help a little bit from that front too. Yeah. Something that, uh, what I forgot your buddy's name in, uh, at atomic empire clues, the guy who sat there with us, uh, Josh, Josh, there we go. Yeah. So he said that more cards have been banned in standard this year than have been banned in Legacy for the past, let's see, we've had four cards banned in Standard, one, two, three, nothing in 2014, nothing in 2013, yeah, 2012, from 2012 to now, four cards have been banned, no, no, that was unbanned, whoops, hang on, here we go, from 2011 to now, they've banned four cards in Legacy, and in the last five months they've banned four cards in standard that's bad <laughs> so yeah they're they're taking steps to uh unscrew that up yep and hopefully this will work the problem is we won't see the effects of what they're doing for another like two years yeah it'll be a little bit so hopefully nothing stupid has happened in the interim hopefully yeah like it's possible that you know They'll hit the ground running with the earliest possible set to test. But even if they do that, that's like predicting what a metagame is going to be on the fly with no regard for anything that ever came to the players before that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of time that goes into properly playtesting. It's not just play a lot and then write down what's good. Yeah. So this will, th- this is an attempt to improve things. And I think having a team. Like, the Future Future League uh, is a thing that that happens in Magic now, and it's just whoever's around that's covered by the NDA that understands Magic. And there's the bandwidth to do something. Yeah, and has the free time to to do some testing, and that's not good enough. (laughs) No. So I think having a full-time group of people who this is their job, I think this will be good. Hopefully, uh, no, I, I'm confident that they won't, like, over-nerf things. Yeah, I, I certainly don't think it can hurt. Yeah. Plus, it gives Melissa DeTora a full-time job at Wizards, so even better. 
Hmm. So, that's that. Let's move on. Right? Anything else? Uh, from that, no. Okay. Uh, we've got more f m promos. May, which is here, is almost over, is unlicensed disintegration. June is Ether Hub. Ooh, that'll be a good one. July is Reverse Engineer, which, if you're like me, you went, huh? That's three blue blue sorcery with improvise. Draw three cards. Yay. And then in August, we have Renegade Rallier. That's pretty neat. And then in September, we've got the huge one, uh, Fatal Push. Whoo. Now, That's I've relevant. Noted, and they do talk about it here in this announcement. The If you look at very carefully at the card collector numbers in the lower left-hand corner, um, Renegade Rallier and Fatal Push are swapped in ordering. And that is not a typo. That is not a, a misprint. That is they very late in the game decided to swap the schedule of those two cards. I don't know the reason was given, but that that was totally done on purpose. They really are coming out in this order. Fatal Push really is September. Yeah, and considering Fatal Push is a ten dollar uncommon, that's uh, it's probably going to be pretty. That sees uh, play in formats. Period. <laughs> yeah, that that's going to be pretty highly coveted. Like it's weird when uh, my mana pool co-host Brian was building a deck for standard, and he's like, "Well, the only thing missing is Fatal Push, but it's more expensive than the rares in the deck, so I'll just do something else." <laughs> <laughs> that's rough. That's a little weird. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem. But, you know, whatever. As I said back when they showed it, it's been fatally pushed to be good in all the formats. Hmm. So let's finish up before we go. Oh, what is this? This is new. Yeah, I found something while we were. Yeah, I I found it while we were talking because I was looking into the horrible people at Reddit and I found something on Reddit that we didn't know. So um, we talked a little bit ago that Hasbro is doing Hascon. Right. Which, aside from sounding like a law cat convention, um, is Hasbro's convention catering to all of their brands, not just Magic, and well, some some of their brands, most of their brand. Um, sorry, was it GI Joe that was left out? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, sorry guys, I uh, half the battle and all that. Um, <laughs> well, like it, per the nature of super high end conventions. Aside from getting like the normal, wow, these are actually really expensive. Yeah, 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 they are. I was just looking at the single day. All right, so yeah, suffice it to say, I'm not going to this. Um, no. But it's like if if you're an adult and you probably are, if you're listening to this, probably um, getting into Hasbro convention for three days is 165 dollars, which is kind of ridiculous. But I know they're giving out a lot of stuff, so maybe the world of scalping will offset that for you. Um, but more relevant to what I'm talking about right now, if you're just rolling in that money and you really don't want to have that money anymore because you're a magic player, um, you can choose one of the VIP ticket things, which super fan is a super fan for magic, the gathering specifically. And so you pick that this is $600 plus state sales tax. Cause wow. Um, and as part of the, swag that you get for throwing down six hundred dollars to get into this event they've got one item on here that's kind of weird um you get three magic the gathering cards made especially for hascon featuring a mashup of magic the gathering and three awesome hasbro brands so So we're gonna get like a transformers artifact creature vehicle you will probably get some kind of self-animating optimus prime vehicle star scream sky sovereign Ah. I don't think that'll fit on the type line. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but you'll probably get something like that. You'll probably get some kind of pony. Probably. And you'll probably get like a Play-Doh elemental or something. Now, um, before before anyone loses their mind over this and goes, I got to come up with 600 bucks because I totally need to jam that at my f and so everybody can see how sweet I am. My understanding is, based on some tweets, and I cannot prove any of this, that these three cards that you get as part of your your $600 swag bag. Uh, They are silver bordered and therefore not legal. Right. That's what I was getting to. They're silver bordered. Um, That's been clarified. Um, And I'll put in a link to the clarification on that as well. Um, Because someone asked trick Jared and he said that they're not reprints. They are new silver bordered mashups. 
So the reason I bring this up is because throughout the history of magic, things like this tend to get super niche, no matter how dumb they are. And if you're spending $600 to get into this event, these things are probably going to become heavy collector's items. But they're not going to be like a you get into the event and then you go stand in line forever type thing. You're going to get them because you ponied up $600. So be aware that these things will exist. No, you don't need to go get them because you can't play with them in any meaningful way. They're about on the par with the holiday cards. They're not real. They're cute and fun. But you may see these in someone's binder someday. So now you know. And and ironically, knowing is half the battle. And G.I. Joe will not be running. I mean, it's possible that this is how G.I. Joe shows up at the event. Could be. Could be. I mean, you know, Cobra Commander would be an interesting card. He was once a man, you know. Oh, maybe. Transform. <laughs> oh, the Transformer has to have Transform, right? No, yeah. it's got to. It has to. Or they failed. Ooh, that'd be so disappointing if it didn't. Like, it's a vehicle on the front and an artifact creature on the back. It's such a waste if it didn't. All right, well, now we're gonna, we're all going to be disappointed when it's not. But Pretty much. There, there you have it. <laughs> we're magic players. We often are disappointed. Yeah. Even when they give us cool stuff, somehow we are still disappointed. <laughs> Your HP and MP are restored, but you're still hungry. Hmm. All right. There are, so, yeah, this is a trip. There are uh, non-magic superfan options, too. Just superfan. Superfan D&D and superfan MTG. You know, in case you have $600 to burn, listen to the show, but don't really want to mess with magic. Also, remember, this is where you'll get the uh, Iconic Masters completely blind and never before seen pre-release. Yeah. Which is neat. It's super neat. You get all those cards like a long time before anyone else gets them. And all you had to do was spend $170 to get in. <laughs> uh, also, the uh, release event is $60. Is that included? Oh, it's probably not if they mentioned that. Okay, wait. Let me check the uh, super fan thing. Oh, you get two. Okay, the $600 does get you two entries Okay. into it, which, I mean... Two entries is $120 of your money right there. Yeah, it's $120 that you should have had to spend to start with. Yeah, but and three days worth of tickets is $180 if you bought the single day passes because they're $60 a piece. So that's, Yeah, these that's are all a whole lot of things like you just spent $20,000 on a car. Here's a cup holder. Exactly. Yeah. So but <laughs> $300 of your uh, total is already taken care of for you right there. There you go. Although, look, I, I got to say, if you're listening to this show and you are planning on going to Hascon, can you let us know and then afterwards tell us how it was? Yeah, I do want to hear about it. Because we're not going. No. Not even slightly. Like, I was thinking no. about it since it's, when is it? I want to say that it was right around Dragon Con, so it was extra no. Why are there no dates? Uh, Because they failed at the most page. fundamental rule of conventions, which is put it in the title. Why are there no dates? Guests and schedule. About Hascon. Let's see what that says. September 8 to 10. Oh, okay. I say I was I was going to try to like save up and hit this, but I'm nope. not even remotely now. It's not even nah. <laughs> no. Although apparently Stan Lee, Peter Cullen, Frank Welker, Mark Rosewater will all be there. I just want to listen to that panel. Oh, but then Dude Perfect is going to be there. So there's a reason not to go. Who? Uh, they're dude bros who do uh, like trick shots with nerf stuff. It's really kind of... As long as they're not on the same panel. I just want to hear Peter Cullen and Mark Rosar talk back and forth. I, somehow I doubt they'll be on the same panel, but... I want it, though. <laughs> can we Can we just get him, those two, and Stan Lee and Frank Welker, to just, to just sit and talk about anything? <laughs> yeah, I don't really care what. Like, they can talk about socks, and I will just listen to that. <laughs> Some socks don't know what it's like to fight war. <laughs> Back in the 1960s, I invented socks. <laughs> Just to be funny, we'll have Ron Perlman do a, a cameo and he'll be like, but socks, socks, socks never, never change. change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're all thinking it. Anyway. Uh, has gone. Yeah, let us know if you're going. I'm curious. 
Yeah. And if you have take that pictures. much money to throw For around. For God, have, take pictures. If you have that much money to throw around, have you considered becoming one of my patrons? For a very small amount. <laughs> uh, so, to end this on a bit of a high note, a bit of a human interest story, let's say. Uh, Jerry Thompson, who just won the Pro Tour last week. Hey, you, you guys know that guy? Uh, yeah, I, I think I've pretty important. I've heard uh, of him. Well, according to his um, profile on Twitter, isn't that great? He's a Mark through Gold's Platinum Pro. <laughs> <laughs> pretty impressive. It he is strike through. Uh, he's so also he the won. end boss of the SCG Tour, apparently. He he won the Pro Tour, and here we go. Uh, he says, I'm just going to read the first bit of this. With my recent Pro Tour win, I find myself in a wonderful place. For the longest time, I haven't been in a position to give back, but this is a great opportunity to do so. Starting Sunday, roughly 6 p.m. PST, I'll be auctioning some memorabilia from Pro Tour Amonkhet, including some swag from the PT, the Nickel Bolas pin I wore, the physical decks I used, and of course, the trophy. All proceeds minus eBay fees will be donated to Planned Parenthood. Any comments, questions... And shares are encouraged. So that's freaking awesome. Yeah. And there you go. Uh, I will include... I lost it. So I'll include a link to that tweet. Because from there you can find all of his other stuff. And also a link to his uh, eBay store where all of this stuff is still live. In case you want to... Why can't I find the copy link to tweet? Bad at this game? Like where... Is it here? No, is it here? Copy link to tweet. There it is. God almighty. Twitter has changed their uh, interface so many times that the basic stuff I just can't find. That's on board. Eh. So yeah, there you go. He's got uh, all kinds of stuff going on. And they have four days left as of this recording. So, <laughs> like, get Should on we tell it. people how much the trophy would set them back at, as of this recording? Uh, right now, the highest bid on the trophy is $4,650. Not a small number. Or Not. approximately two standard decks. <laughs> Aw. Oops. I covered up the wrong link. Yeah, there we go. Thank goodness. Oh, hey, expedited are... shipping. Yay. So there you go. If you're interested in any of that, uh, then go, go check it out. He's selling decks and some tokens and nickel bullets pin and all kinds of stuff. Yay, and the trophy, of course. Uh, there is one more thing here. Rosewater did another uh, Q&A, which he calls odds and ends, which I don't appreciate. Although I think, yeah. he's, I think he's been doing it longer, but, you know, I still don't oh, appreciate boy. it. Um, where nothing much of interest happens, but he does say that there is a, a new Planeswalker coming in uh, the next set, and he's a... I can't find it now, but he's a, uh, I'm on cat native. There we go. Yeah. Because the, we've seen a little bit of criticism of late about the fact that the gate watch are eating up all of the planeswalker slots and that each block is really just getting like the one new one. Who's the local. And that is apparently continuing here. Only this time the local is in the second set and not the first one. Although wait, he doesn't say anywhere that it's a local. Um, Will just added that to the thing in the show notes. So the question: Why were there no new planes? Well, no new planeswalkers on Amonkhet. The answer is there is a new planeswalker in the block. You just haven't met them yet. Why weren't they in Amonkhet rather than Hour of Devastation? Story reasons. That's oh, that's true. That's the entire response. So ignore that bit about an Amonkhet native because that hasn't been confirmed. Yeah, and that wasn't Will's fault. That was my fault. Oh, did you do that? Yeah, I, I misread it when I added that note. Like, we'll put in the link, but when I was reading over it, that's the thing that I mistakenly took away from that. Oh, so it's Bill. Yeah, that's entirely my fault. I'm not going to make Will deal with that. You bastard. I'm Will, an honest bastard. Will Blanks, by the way, uh, a judge, magic judge down in uh, Georgia somewhere near Atlanta, the poor bastard, uh, is our unsung fourth member who is always throwing stuff in the show notes so that we're sure to have stuff to talk about. And we love you, Will. Mwah. Thanks, Will. Not Bill, though, because he, he added... No, I'm terrible. He added fake crap. There, I deleted it. Ha! There you go. Take that evidence. Wait, this is being recorded. <laughs> so, 
As punishment, you have to talk about Magic Online now. And hey, it's Tuesday. Last time we recorded on Tuesday, it it wasn't um it, it wasn't, wasn't up, updated. updated because they decided yeah. not to update stuff until Wednesday. So how about now? Yeah, they actually updated it on Tuesday this oh week. Oh my god. So in contrast to normal, because we're recording on Tuesday, I actually have more current Magic Online news, most of which I'm still not gonna go into because it's about upcoming events that if you play Magic Online, you already know about. But hey, it's current. So um, first up, I'm gonna they put out a post uh, last week on the Wizards Tumblr, letting us know that the the Magic Online Tumblr. Yeah, sorry, the Magic Online Tumblr. Not to be confused with the Wizards Tumblr or the Mark Rosewater Tumblr or the Tumblr that people drink out of, um, which they're probably gonna need to after digging through all this nonsense. Isn't the thing you put your dice in when you're playing Yahtzee? Isn't that a Tumblr? Quite possibly. Oh my God! Some people have dice towers. <laughs> Wait, did we mention the circus tumbler? Uh, oh, not yet. Because right. I'd tumble oh, for you. Okay. Oh, yeah, reference. there you go. <laughs> As opposed to tumbler, which is a 2000s reference. Um, yeah, so essentially, um, as we mentioned a few weeks ago, Magic Online is going to have a slightly different um, you know, ban list than the normal commander ban list. Because the normal commander ban list is made for paper, which factors in all the cards that exist in paper. And because Magic Online is not a perfect one-to-one translation from paper, since not all those cards exist, um, it has a slightly different environment, especially when you go into the world of one-on-one versus group. So what they've essentially told us as of this post from last week, um, they've changed the ending of the 1v1 Commander League to end before the downtime on tomorrow, or today for most of you listening to this, which is, you know, the 24th. The reason they changed it is because they're going to continue to make some changes to the ban restricted list for that. I guess just the ban list for Commander, because everything is restricted. Um, and so they didn't tell us what it is. They'll announce that, I guess, day of. Um, but just be aware that format is slightly changing already, and will continue to do so, because they're, they seem to be willing to throw around the bands a bit more frequently in this than they would in, like, say, Standard, where you bottom out the market. So be aware of that. Um, cool. Um, up next on this list, we've got the flashback favorites, those things that they do once in a while where they dig out an old format and they let us play it. Um, after the amazing success last week of the combo winter thing, which Mary and I have brought down Magic Online for several hours, um, I can't confirm that's what happened, but Magic Online definitely went down for a while last week after it went up. So (laughs) considering the nature of Combo Winter, I'm going to blame it on Combo Winter, even if it had nothing to do with it, because I didn't see a post saying what actually knocked it down. Um, I just know it went down. So go figure. If someone knows the actual reason, feel free to tweet at me because I'm curious. But until I actually see one, I'm just going to assume that too much Combo. Um, so anyway, the, the thing that's picking up this week after the combo winter thing goes away is the flashback favorite centered on triple original Mirrodin draft. So welcome to equipment. It's busted. <laughs> welcome to, oh God, I hope I get shatter because everything needs to be busted. <laughs> um, I'm not going to dig too far into that because last year when they were doing the um, year of modern, we went over this for a little bit. But suffice it to say, that's what's going on right now. So you can read about it from the posted last year description here to know what it's going to cost and all the nature of it. But hey, if you want to play an original Mirrodin back before you got all these scars, you can check that out. Um, In terms of the actual Weekly Magic stuff, which again, went up today, um, you can find some information on the Team Draft Super League, which um, is apparently starting a few... Or actually, it started about an hour or two ago. So neat, if you're interested in that. Um, You've got some information about the throwback standard gauntlets for the early 2000s, which are apparently going live tomorrow. Um, You can find information on how they're doing that as well in the link that I gave you before. Um, And then there's a whole bunch of Amonkhet events and standard PTQs and sealed PTQs and the stuff that usually goes on the weekend after the announcement. So if you're looking to play Magic Online this weekend... Uh, click on the link in the show notes to find out which events are going on and what times. So that's cool. And finally, um, last week they put up a bug blog, which 
as you may recall, is the place where we learn what does and doesn't work in Magic Online. And often, funny and new and ridiculous things that don't work in funny ways. Uh, before I go into these, just a reminder that when something doesn't work as a result of a bug, you can try to put in to get reimbursed if it you know ruins your event. Um, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. But if you see someone knowingly taking advantage of these things, then they're cheating and that is frowned upon and can result in a lot of negative consequences, so you should report them. Likewise, if you try to take advantage of these things, you are cheating and you're a terrible person. Stop that before someone reports you. So that said, here are the newly added known issues. Um, Kalitas, uh -oh. you know, that traitor or get. Um, you combine them with Anointed Procession, which is a card for the new set where if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. Well, it makes the an incorrect number of zombies. I don't know if that means like extra or less or always three. Um, so it it should just give you two every time. Yes, because because that would be gives you one, and then double that would be two. Two. So uh, I don't know how many it's making, but it's incorrect. <laughs> so go figure. Um, yeah. Speaking of new cards that do neat stuff. Um, Combat Celebrant, who is the neat one that he's the neat um, human warrior from the current set, Almon Cat, who lets you um, exert it when you attack. And if you do, you get to untap and fight again. Yeah. You don't untap him, you untap everybody else. Um, oddly enough, if Combat Celebrant is attacking a planeswalker, you're not allowed to exert it. So that would probably ruin your entire turn, possibly your entire strategy, that guy. So that's a problem you should be aware of. Hopefully it doesn't ruin your game as you, like clues, decide to attack that blue planeswalker with everybody. Um, up next, um, Crumbling Vestige is um, it's a weird land that has the potential to make mana of any color when it comes into the battlefield. As in, like that's what it does. Um, it doesn't tap for it, but when it comes in, it makes it. Um, but even though that's a mana, it can add to your mana pool. Right now, Reflecting Pool which adds a mana, uh, adds one mana of any type that a land you control could produce, um, doesn't understand it. So Reflecting Pool is not doing that. That's unfortunate, because that actually is a really neat combo if it's working properly. So be aware of that. Um, Memory Lapse moves Aftermath cards back to the top of the library instead of to the Exile Zone. That sounds important. So... Wait. Is... Okay. Is that wrong? So counter target spell, if that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard, right? Um, aftermath cards, as in when you cast them from the graveyard, they're supposed to go away. But instead, they're getting put on top of the library. You're not supposed to be able to cheat those back in through anything. Oh, okay, here we go. 702.126a... Aftermath means you may cast this half of this split card from your graveyard. It also means this half of this split card can't be cast from any zone other than a graveyard. And it means if this spell was cast from a graveyard, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else any time it would leave the stack. So, yes, it's supposed to go into exile regardless. Right. Because so that's the just a placement effect on memory lapse only replaces the graveyard going, not mm -hmm. the... It doesn't just automatically go to the top of the library from regardless, apparently. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's a weird interaction, but essentially it's not doing what it's supposed to. Womp womp. Um, here's a weird one. So Synthetic Destiny and Mass Polymorph, which are both cards that have a whole lot of text that essentially says, that creature you have, no, it's going to be a different one. Um... They don't take commanders into account when determining the number of creatures to reveal. So apparently these cards don't acknowledge commanders as creatures. That's racist. I think it's because both of them start with an exile all creatures you control. And something was probably interfering with that behavior when dealing with commanders. But regardless, that's weird. Um, here's a funny one. Watching a replay where a player names a card will cause a game crash. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's actually really funny. <laughs> right? <laughs> you're not even 
you know, playing the game right now. <laughs> You're watching a replay, but no. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Take that, meddling mage. Um and finally, um, how do you pronounce this? Oubliette. 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 I think so. Oubliette, which is an old enchantment. <laughs> um yeah, getting from, destroyed. Uh, what is that from? The no not the dark. Uh Oh, wait, the, I can mouse over it. Arabian Nights. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a strange um, O-ring kind of effect where it gets rid of um, target creature and all the auras that are attached to it. But rather than the auras just falling off, they go away with the creature. And then when Obliet disappears or gets you know t- dealt with, the creature comes back from exile and all the stuff that was attached to it comes back attached to it. So it's a more complicated thing. Um, but now when it's destroyed, the game just goes soft lock. So <laughs> first of all, don't do this because you're going to probably, like, if you do this intentionally in a deck, you're just cheating. And second, what's probably happening on the back end, just my guess is that when the enchantments are coming back, normally if an enchantment just gets like an R gets thrown into the battlefield, you actually get to choose what you put it on. Like, there's a choice there. But in this case, that choice is already made, and it's probably waiting for that choice when there's no prompt for it, and that's probably causing a soft lock. Would be my guess. So Yeah, probably. That just seemed, like, usually when you get a soft lock, it's because there's a prompt that you don't actually get that it's waiting for. So that'd be my assumption there. So that's what's broken right now. Be aware of it. Um, if you click on the link in the show notes, you can also find a list of all of the currently known issues across all the formats. Um, it's 126 entries, so be aware of that. Most of them are like niche cards that popped up during like Year of Modern or you know random other stuff, where they're just minor interface issues, like the wrong flavor text or something dumb, um, or this font is in italics when it shouldn't be, or stupid things like that, because they log everything. So it's not as bad as it sounds. But if you're going to play a lot of Magic Online, you should definitely. Give this a read once and keep up with it every few weeks when they put up a new bug log. Because otherwise, it's like playing magic and only knowing most of the rules and not knowing all of them. It's a very dangerous way to be. So, Wow. Yeah, there's stuff that's good to know in here. Commander, for instance, I just happened to see copying all Sun's Dawn sometimes causes a crash. I love the sometimes. Yeah. Which means they don't know why either. <laughs> yeah. And, and the very last one on this first page, in certain circumstances, a thing happens. It, it, that's all, in certain circumstances. <laughs> Thanks, Bug Block. <laughs> what is it, due to issues? Yeah, yeah due to issues. <laughs> because reasons. Damn near half. <laughs> Damn near half. Yeah, so anyway, that's pretty much it for the Magic Online news this week. Expect um, Monday's mag- next Monday's Magic Online news to consist of, you know, the announcements of whatever was banned in Commander and then nothing else because we've probably hit all the news they're going to give us this week. <laughs> so, hooray. Excellent. All right, then. Well, that is our episode. We should wrap it up then, gentlemen. Yep, sounds good. So uh, you can find me on Twitter at Squee Goblin and Bob. There's no Iron Goblin because... Honestly, at this point, it's probably trying to sneak into Hascon in advance. Uh, please send it food because it's going to wait it out. And you can't survive in a convention center on an eye's budget for that long. It'll never make it. So if you see an eye, just probably feed it a little bit. We'll appreciate it. If not, whatever. We'll be back next turn. Um, and speaking of convention centers, you can find me at the Raleigh Convention Center this weekend because I'm going to be at Animazement. And Animazement is having Animazement year 20 which means it will be my 19th animation because I've been a nerd for that long. Um, uh, you've I'm been a for- nerd for longer than that. Yeah, but I've been a nerd capable of going outside the conventions for that long. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, it's the biggest anime convention in North Carolina. Um, it's a giant event. Uh, it's a lot of crazy costumes. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how many people throw together an Overwatch costume in three days based on all the skins that just came out today. Um okay. That'll be impressive, but it'll be fun. I'll be there on Friday. I'll probably be wearing my um, Ozpin Ruby costume because 
yeah, that'll be the day that most of my friends are doing the Ruby stuff. And on Saturday, I'm going to be a master Tonberry with a lightsaber because apparently they do that now. So I'll be around. I'll also be running an AMV retrospective because I, a long time ago, I ran the music video contest at Animazement and they asked me to come back for the 20th to sort of give them a rundown of some of the best things that they've gotten over the last two decades. So I'll be running that on Saturday before the costume contest. And then a little after the costume contest wraps up, I'm going to be part of the history of Animazement panel because, again, I've been there for nearly all of it, one way or another. So if you'd like to meet me when I'm speaking at a panel, I'll be at those. If you just want to meet me, I'll be around. Um, hit me up on Twitter. I'll have my phone with me all weekend. I'll try to you know, meet up with anybody. If you're going to go, let me know. Um, it'll be cool. We can see each other and hang out. It'll be your job to prevent me from spending money in the dealer's room. I'm probably going to do an okay job of that at this point because honestly i'm not a space for this crap but yep. still it'll be fun so if you're there let me know we'll hang out it'll be awesome um other than that you yeah you should also go back in time to last friday and hang out with us at clues yeah so agreed get, although get on i gotta that. tell you if you get a chance to meet bill you should take it because he's pretty awesome just let him know who you are otherwise it'll be really awkward or do that if you want it to be really awkward that that works too <laughs> All right, and uh, go clues. All right, hey, uh, hi everybody. Um, I just want to say before before I get to any of that normal closing stuff, had an awesome time hanging out at Atomic Empire in Durham, North Carolina. It's a great shop. You should check it out uh, once again over this weekend. It was really cool. Uh, I think there were fourteen folks who showed up for Legacy on a random Friday night, uh, just because I was going to be in town, which was awesome. Uh, they mostly beat the snot out of me, which was great. Uh, game one. Turn one, I was on the draw. My opponent was on the play. My opponent was uh, Michael Braverman, uh, a name that may be familiar uh, from folks from uh, SCG tournaments, if nothing else. Uh, Braverman, who has a long history of beating the crap out of me at Legacy, doesn't know what deck I'm playing. Turn one, game one, chalice on one. And I was playing Cheerios, which meant <laughs> that all yeah. of my glimpse of nature's totally useless at this point. So yeah, we're done. I'm just scoop. Let's go to game two. Uh, so that kind of set the tone for the whole evening, but I still had a really good time uh, seeing folks that I haven't seen in a while hanging out. It was a great, great, great time. Uh, so if you want to hear more from me someday, we will begin recording random discard again. Now that I am moved and uh, rich has hopefully settled in with the twins uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. If you would like to get in touch with me, your best bet is on the Twitters. I am at Lock Luse, spelled just like it is in ye olde show notes. And I think that's all I got. Uh, I believe we'll toss it over to Chewy. Who, me? Uh, yes, you. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> uh, just say Manipool. Manipool, Manipool, Manipool. I can't take the pressure. I can't fight this feeling any longer. It's it's actually anymore. I love that song. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's the ending. The beginning is is I can't fight this feeling any longer. Oh, something, okay, something, the very beginning. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was starting at the I was starting at the beginning. Fine. Yeah. Look, even as I wander, I'm keeping you in sight. <laughs> I'm oh. the nerd. <laughs> I am a candle in a window on a, a, on a long dark night? summer's night or whatever. However, that line. I don't know that line. Oh, by the way, sky check. It's cloudy. Yes. Yeah, it is. All right, carry on. So, My yes. Son. You... <laughs> Damn it, Clues. When I see you smile, <laughs> I can me face the world. <laughs> when you are done. Uh... Put your weary hand in mine. <laughs> Don't you cry. No more. I'm sorry. I'll just mute. You go ahead. Uh, I drove all night just to get to you. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> anyway, anyway. Just to watch him die. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's that's the other thing. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> that was for later. Anyway, uh, yes, you can find me, of course, here on Monday Night Magic and on the Mana Pool uh, virtually every week. We didn't record the Mana Pool last week because reasons, but we're going to record one this week. I think we're going to do another Mythic Conscription for Guild Pact this time. Ooh. Where we go back to pre-Mythic sets and try to figure out what would have been Mythic if Mythic was a thing. Yeah, um, we were going to have Chris Lansdell on since he's a newly minted L3, let's say, to do History of the Banhammer Part 2, 
but he doesn't know days of the week, so he couldn't join us. He's like, yes, I'm good for this week. All right, see you Thursday. Thursday, wait, no. I said Thursday like an hour ago. <laughs> anyway, anyway. These are things that happen. Uh, Clues, please stop throwing links in, in the chat. You're distracting me. <laughs> please. Give it a minute. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Did you not mute those? Is everyone? No, they don't. The they don't make noise. They're just popping up on my other. Monitor. Oh, okay. Well, that was that was the last one. I'm sorry. Lord have mercy. Oh, <laughs> things and stuff. This is what Clues does. This is preparation for the odds and ends. He's just just throwing just stuff get over him in there, there for us to giggle just at, in, just in case. Um, right over on YouTube.com/slash the mana pool. I've been playing Injustice because Injustice Two. Just came out for consoles that I don't own, so never mind about Injustice 2, but I've been playing the story mode of Injustice 1. I also started the Amonkhet story in Magic Duels. I recorded another Shovel Knight that will go up uh, for everyone tomorrow. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Over on twitch.tv slash thebanapool. Since we didn't record Monday Night Magic last night, I streamed Overwatch for... Not Overwatch. God. Uh, that's tomorrow. I streamed Hearthstone for like four hours, playing lots of different decks, hung out with a lot of people in chat. That was a lot of fun. I'm a Twitch affiliate now, and all of that stuff that that entails. Uh, on Wednesday, so if you're listening to this, then tomorrow night, I will be streaming... And Clues is back. Hey, buddy. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to hit the mute button. My apologies. <laughs> I hit the, I hit the mute yourself. call button. That is one way to mute. Just hang up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Clues 9000. That was him, not me. It's not my fault. <laughs> now you may forget what I was saying. Right. So Wednesday night, I will be streaming Overwatch because there are three brand new uh, arena maps, which is where we do the 3v3, me, my, uh, me myself and I, me and Bill and Cap from Lair of Lore uh, usually team up and play that and there's only been one map this whole time but now they're sick of antarctica yeah i actually am kind of sick of antarctica but now they've added three new maps quadrupling the total number of maps and that's amazing they've also added two new uh versions of 3v3 and one-on-one elimination which seem to which look to be a lot of fun so yay uh i'm also going to be opening 50 some i've got two right now so 52 <laughs> wait are you gonna open damn near half of them uh, no i'm gonna open all of them 52 like a flash points worth uh overwatch is it the new 52 oh my god shut up you two uh, i'm gonna be opening 52 overwatch anniversary loot boxes due to the generosity of uh, a listener named mike who may or may not actually work for blizzard hmm. yeah which is good, because I'm not going to be able to grind this event as much as I have the previous two. Like, this weekend is completely eaten up with uh, f- a bunch of family coming to visit, and they're like the good family, the kind I want to hang out with. So uh, I'm just going to be with them all weekend uh, while they are all insane, and it's a lot of fun. So that's a whole weekend of playing Overwatch I'm not going to get, which means I'm going to miss killing noobs in the uh, free weekend on Overwatch, but I will. So yeah, he sent myself and Bill Woo. some uh, Blizzard balance so we can buy loot boxes because Bill's yeah, going to miss a whole weekend of Overwatch grinding too yeah. because in amazement. Yeah, I'm going to be at a con all weekend. I might not even get to play any of the new maps until next week. So and that's I'm going to try to I'm going to try to like make sure he's got everything done so he can at least play for a little while with me tomorrow night, but no promises. We'll see what I can do. <laughs> So yeah, if you enjoy opening stuff or if you enjoy Overwatch, then you should come hang out Wednesday night. If you're listening to this after that, sorry, the VOD is still on Twitch. My bad. And yeah, that sounds like enough of that. You can find me on Twitter at the Manipool, basically the Manipool everywhere. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, themanipool.com is where you'll find the Manipool podcast. Just all of that. And yes. And Patreon, if you want to help support what I do with all of this insane amount of content creation, then you can check out the Patreon.com. It's Patreon.com slash the Manipool. I want to add the in front of everything now. And the you can Ugin. get uh, what he said. The damn near the half. <laughs> you can the get uh, YouTube videos and Manipool episodes early. You can get 
uh, the odds and ends, all the stuff recorded before and after, both Monday Night Magic and the Mana Pool. I'm way behind on those. I'm very sorry. Tomorrow's plan before the stream is actually just to work on those all day and play Hearthstone because that's what I do while I'm working on those. Warning, there may be swearing in the odds and ends. Uh, warning, there's definitely swearing in the odds and ends. It's virtually guaranteed. Yes. Even Brian occasionally swears in the odds and ends, which is always entertaining. Oh, man. Yeah. Who um, wants that hard drive? And you, can, <laughs> and you can also, in addition to those two things, if you are feeling uh, generous, you can get your name on the end screen for all of the videos, not counting podcasts, that go up in each month that you support at that tier. So, yay. I'm actually, if I don't do it, this coming month and the month after that, I'm going to redo the end screen. It depends on how much I have going on when uh, the first rolls around. Yeah, I think I'm going to totally overhaul the way the end screen works. See if I can make it a little. Are you going to put it at the beginning? Uh, no, instead of having like the one 20 second end screen that's got the all the uh, uh, what are they called? The cards and stuff at the end. They used to be annotations, but now they're like end screen elements. And all of the names, I'm going to have it split into two screens. So it'll show all the patron people and then all the in-screen elements and stuff. Gotcha. And everything won't be so, like, crowded and crammed on there and everyone's name won't be so tiny. You know, stuff like that. These right. are the things that us, uh, like, content creators think about that don't don't occur to uh, the people just watching. Hmm. At least they don't occur and, to me when I'm just watching. And if I have to crawl upon the floor come crashing through your door. Baby, I can't fight this feeling anymore. Ario oh, Speedwagon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I love that song. I'm not going to lie. Get teared up every time, unless Clues is just speaking the words at me, in which case, don't feel a thing. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. <laughs> that hurts. I'm just going to hang up. <laughs> Best again. Speedwagon since JoJo. What, uh, yes, what he said. The, anyway, the audience anyway. gets it. If you want to help support magic podcasting in general, but not me specifically, uh, I completely understand. You can go to mtgcast.com. Dot com? Go to mtgcast.com, click on support mtgcast, and you can sign up there for a small monthly donation. Because while mtgcast is completely free for all of us podcasters, and it's completely free for all of you listeners, it's not actually completely free and actually costs quite a bit. So, I'm sure they appreciate it. And with that, we're we're gonna be done so this has been episode 561 of monday night magic thank you as always to clues and squee for joining me we. and thank you all so very much for listening and uh, go play some magic yeah.